Hi, this is Craig Daniels. Welcome to the second episode of the Tech Tutor video series. In this video, we're going to learn how to step it up a notch with images on the web. Whether we are working with our blogs or business pages, sometimes we need something more than just a plain photo. Let's add some text, compose a few different elements together for some style. Are you ready to learn something new? Spend a few minutes with me. I'm here as your Tech Tutor. Welcome to Craig's Classroom. So in our class today we're going to be looking about how to compose some graphics taking different graphical elements. We know that photos in our posts or web pages help make the page more lively and interesting for those that come visit us. But sometimes it's we want to make a graphic or a composition that has perhaps a photo element, uh, some textual elements and uh, more or less have a free form of where we put the text on on and let it let us move the text around on the, we'll say, the canvas and to create a composition. Now, let's take the example of a website here. Uh, we'll be working with the Activerain website today. And in the case of the profile page, I'm going to be looking at Jenny's page here, and she's got a cover photo on her on her profile page that you can see is a combination of a, a photograph along with the textual content imprinted on the top. So a tagline such as a RI Rhode Island Coastal Real Estate Agent and a phone number. Now in today's class I wanted to take you to not the profile page but let's go over to our actual blog post on Active Rain. It could be working in WordPress or any other website and all of this still holds true. But in the case of a blog post um, at the very end, in the Active Rain, this just recently changed their formatting around. So, so now we lost in the formatting of Active Rain, we lost the background image and we lost any sort of banner graphic. Now we have the profile image over here on the upper right. But you notice all that background and header and all that we might have had before is now gone. So, it's a good thing because it creates a nice clean page, but it also gives us an opportunity to look at our signatures because. At the end of each blog post, the person perhaps finds us on Google, comes over to the blog post, enjoys the blog post. The signature is the way for you to capture their interest and redirect it. So first of all, you'll see an active rain now in the new formatting. It's got this this banner. It says posted by. So and then what follows immediately after there should be an answer to that. Who is this? person that wrote this article, someone finds you, who is this person, I like what they say, I want to know more about them. So first of all, we what I'm, we're going to be doing today is you can see this image here that we, we can see on Jenny's page that we'll be creating for her and you can create one very similar or you can take ideas from this, but you can see it's one graphic that's composed of text, it's got this red banner with white text on top, it's got a call to action phone number, call to action, email address. We've added Ginny's photograph and then we've also put into the background a cropped out a bit of a image here that, that ties into a little bit of Ginny's branding with the ruby red shoes and, and this is a, a graphic that we can use to give liven up a personality of who Ginny is and a little bit about the tagline that she likes to use because there is no place like home and we can obviously see the tie-in to a very famous movie. But the ruby red shoes, the picture of Ginny, the text, all these different elements tied together into a singular graphic that we can then insert into our page, in this case our signature, our blog signature, and that leaves the reader with a very interesting conclusion to this particular post and hopefully it's going to to further emphasize that this is somebody that they would want to work with. So how do we create that? Well, there are more expensive solutions that software-wise out there, such as your Photoshops or your Adobe Illustrator or so forth. But in this case here, we're not um, we're considering people who write blog posts don't necessarily have to be, you know, spending lots of hundreds of dollars on applications such as Photoshop because it's not not an inexpensive. So we're looking for inexpensive solutions and, and free isn't 
awesome solution. And on the web now, there are plenty of tools now that give us the free price tag to do something that's you know quite um, interesting, such as this com composition here. So, first of all, let's go to. I want to take a look at. We need to kind of pick a color theme here. So the first thing I'm going to do is take you to a website. Let's go start up a new tab, and I'm going to take you to a website called ColorPicker.com. It's ColorPicker.com, and on this website you can see it gives us a color swatch that we could we could fiddle around here with this tool, these sliders, and we could pick different hues, and within a hue we could pick different intensities. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us a color number. In web design, we use a hexadecimal coloring system. You don't have to know exactly how to interpret this number, but just to know that this number, 28D4BD, represents this color, which is this uh, aqua greenish type of color. That number represents that color. So we could fiddle around with this until we find a color that we'd like to use in our theme. Now another excellent way to kind of browse colors is to go down here to on the bottom of this page you'll see there's some different links. One says color chart and this will take us to actually a whole chart of different colors and this might give us some different ideas of different colors that we might like to use. So you can see there's all sorts of names for colors and if we were to go down to here Jenny had noted that she, perhaps she'd like to use the color that's titled crimson but not by the word but by see if I if I were to select these color numbers here it's six digits DC 143 C if I select those those color number digits there's six digits and copy to the clipboard I'm gonna save that on my clipboard for just a little bit a few minutes away and you'll be able to see I'm gonna paste that color number in to get a color that I want now let's head to a new tab. I'll leave that tab open just in case I need to come back to it. But if I head to another website, ipicky.com. ipicky.com is a website, it's a free web-based photo editor that allows us to do various things with our images. So on this, once I get to the ipicky page, I'm looking for the but big button right in the middle that says start editing and that's going to take me to the next screen which is going to have a whole bunch of tools that I can work with. Now I can upload a photo and this would have various tools for such things like cropping and uh, working with uh, color adjustments, brightness and contrast and different things. But this is interesting right from the very start because I do have an image that I'd like to use but not in its full form. I need to crop it down. So let's take this iPicky tool and I'm going to I'm going to go to Jenny's folder here and I'm going to pick the, the image that had um, a bigger poster sized image that Jenny, Jenny, that Alan Caruso had created for Jenny. So if I click on this, you'll see this is the full poster sized image that talks about, uh, that represents Jenny's branding about the ruby red shoes. But I can't, in the in the context of the blog signature, I have I don't have this much space. This would take up the whole thing and then some. So I need to create a cropped down version of this. So I'm going to take my cropping tool in iPicky. And you can see it, it gives me a box here that I can drag the edges. See these little boxes on the side. I can take any one of those boxes, top, bottom, or corner. And it allows me to adjust my crop. So I'm going to crop this down because I want to see the wand. I want to see the shoes, obviously and I'm going to crop it over to the left a little ways. You can see the the closet that's in the background and that would give me a little bit of context of what where this uh, graphic is, is representing. So I'm going to use that as my cropping size and I'll go ahead and click the button that says apply and that would be my cropped image. Now in order for me to, to have this and to be able to reuse it in the future I'm going to go up to the toolbar at the top and hit the save button and it's going to tell me where do I, what do I want to call this? So I'm going to call this the name like Crop Shoes and then the file format and a little bit about graphics. If um, you're working with a truly photograph type of image where there's literally you know hundreds of thousands of colors, JPEG is a 
It was designed for photographs. In fact, the P in JPEG means photo. So if you're dealing with a photo, a JPEG is, a, is the best image format. However, when you're dealing with illustrations or graphics that have not millions of colors, but just a few. In fact, this is a little hand-drawn illustration. We've really only got not that wide of a range of colors here. So any sort of uh, illustrative types of uh, things such as logos and different things like that we can use a format that's called a ping format or a PNG and it's going to give us a little bit higher quality of that original image. So if you remember JPEGs are for photos and PNGs are more for illustrations and logos then you might remember that helps you. Now you could we could say this is a JPEG and that'd be perfectly fine but if you know that little tidbit about PNG files, it can have a little bit higher quality of the image that you save. So I'm going to save that, and it's going to drop me off into the folder that I've made for Ginny uh, called Crop Shoes Ping, and I'll save that. So it's going to drop me off onto this screen that says your photo was saved. Now, the notice this is very important, something to the way that iPicky works, do you want to close that photo or continue editing that photo? Well, we actually want to start from a clean uh, blank canvas, so I don't want to continue editing that folder a photo. I'm going to close the photo and that's going to give me basically a clean canvas. You'll see on the toolbar here we're going to use another tool to create a canvas and to compose all the different pieces together and that's what iPicky calls a blend. So this button here says create a new blend and it's going to pop up with a box here that's going to say what size in pixels do you want to use now in active rain if that's what you're think considering um, we can use in our blog signatures up to a maximum of 680 and that's um, in the context of the new format that just came out um, we can use up now in active rain with the new format in general we can use 700 pixels but within the signature itself there's a little bit of a what's called a padding which which gives us a little bit less of a, a usable area so if you just remember 680 inside the signature you'll be okay the height we can we can give ourselves more than enough room let's give ourselves 400 pixels high once we compose our image then we can go ahead and crop off any excess white space but let's give ourselves enough room that we can make sure we have enough to compose onto so 680 by 400 and we'll go ahead and create that blank canvas so here it is this white canvas is representing the image area that we can work with now we need to go get the different pieces that we we can use in order to compose the signature that we want. So let's go hit the photo button. We're going to add a photo. We're going to use the upload photos option and it's going to drop me off in a folder and if it's, this is not the folder that you wanted to work with then you could just navigate to find the folder that you have your images. So here we had created the image just, just recently said crop shoes. So if I go ahead and choose that image you'll see it puts it over here in my tray now I can take anything that's in my tray so I'm taking the cropped version I'm going to drag it over and drop it off onto my canvas and there if I click on it it selects that different element but you can see now that it's selected it's a movable object and it's also editable because if I take a corner I can resize this to be whatever size works best in the context that I need it to be. So I can move it and resize it. <clears throat> now here's a typical beginner mistake that I don't want you to do. If you want to resize something like this, you want to take one of the four corners because that way if it grows horizontally, it's going to grow proportionally vertically. What beginners sometimes do, you see this, is they'll take an edge and they will take this edge and see what happens here? It's not doing a proportional stretch. It's just modifying it in in one of the two directions. So I could get this really out of proportion and at this point now I, I could probably get it back by guessing to how it was but it would probably never be precise. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. If I select it and press the delete key I'm just going to take it out and I'm going to reinsert it from scratch again so I can get keep the proportion. So don't do the edges on the resize. Click on it and grab one of the corners and that will resize it proportionally. So that's one of the elements. See if I click on it, it highlights it. If I click off of it, it unhighlights it. Now what I want to do is add some textual components. So let's take some text here. I'm going to click the text tool 
and it says your text here so I can move this little piece of text anywhere around on the screen that I want. If I select that text so that it's highlighted you'll see the text edit box is up here. So I could type in Jenny's name. Now one of the things we... I'm going to move that up here a little bit. One of the things we talked about was working with colors so let me drop back to my tab that has my colors and I'm going to re copy to the clipboard that color number and over here back on my iPicky tab I'm gonna click on the over here on the sidebar the swatch that's currently black and come up here and double click that and I'm going to paste the number that I want to use which is that crimson type color and you can see it just changes that text over to to that red crimson color now I'm gonna add some other elements I actually wanted to add some different text so I could I could do the text tool again and this time I could type in here but you know what I already had changed this one to be the color that I want so since this one is already the color that I want rather than create one that if it's black and I have to keep changing the color again let's go ahead and select that one that I has created and delete it so I select it and then I hit the delete key and it, you notice it disappears. Rather than make a new text, what I can do is select the text I've already created and right click on it or control click if you're on a Mac and then what I'm looking for is something called duplicate. So that will go ahead and make a duplicate copy of the text. Then I can come up here and change the text that I want. So let's say uh, this one will be her phone number so I'll do the 401-529 seven eight four nine so then I could go ahead and right click on that one again and duplicate now as far as the sizing and spacing and all that we can work on that later let's just get on the page all the different elements that we want to work with so the next thing I need to do is put in her email address so if I go up to select the third piece and go ahead and come up to the text edit box and type in R I uh, by the bay at gmail dot com and the if I right click on her name again and duplicate this one is going to be her tagline that we're going to use in this context and, and we'll, so we'll type out because there is no place like home okay so now we have the different elements that we're going to work with perhaps now that we can look at the size and the placement of them so I can move that up here I can move that over here maybe that maybe this image will it all has to be dynamically adjusted as things kinda come into place so I'm gonna pick this text grab one of the corners remember don't grab the edges because that stretches it non proportionally but take this by one of the corners and bring that down a little bit alright so that's good now I'll bring this over here and this over here. Now a couple other elements you can see all this white space at the bottom is going to end up just being cut off in the end we just gave ourselves a little bit of extra room to go to work with on the canvas we'll cut that off in the very end. The next element that I want to add to the page is a rectangular color box so this falls under the shape category so if I click the shape button and it's going to be a background box for one our tagline on there so when we get into this screen here you can see I could just draw something any sort of shape that I want but really what I want to do is pick a preset shape whether it's a circle rectangle star or any other piece all sorts of ones I could choose but I'm gonna choose the rectangle option and that will just go ahead and create a rectangle shape it's in a funky color I don't really care about that it's really the shape that I that I care about the color and the size of the the rectangle will be dynamic after I insert it so I'm gonna go ahead and click done and that's gonna insert a rectangle into my canvas and now you can see it's a dynamic rectangle I can drag the edges and I can change the color just as I did with the other one here so if I double click here and paste that that color there we have a crimson colored rectangle that can is dynamically again sizable as we need it to be so we'll, we'll fine-tune that size as we go along so I'm gonna go ahead and drag this rectangle up here on top and this is going to so this rectangle is gonna now you can see that the crimson on top of the crimson text is not gonna help us out here so this introduces well 
couple things for us. Let me go ahead and pick this text here. I'm going to need it to be white. So, because I want the white to show up on top of the red. So I'm going to pick the text that I want to change the color, come over here, and I'm going to take this color box and just drag it all the way up into the upper left. Actually, I'm going to get it to the top of the screen, and I'm going to take this letter and bring it all the way over here. That's going to give me, when you see F, 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 as many sixes, as, there's six of them there, that's going to be white. Okay, so my text is going to be white, but you notice here what's happening is my text turned white. It's really sitting underneath the red box here, so I need to tell that text needs to be on top of the red box, not behind the red box. So if I right click on that object, see there's different things here that says send to back, send to front. So what I want to do is send it all the way to the front, and that's going to bring it on top of that red box, and now I can actually see it. So what you have to be careful with is white on white you could lose something here so you just have to keep keep little tabs on that text make sure that as you move these two things you kind of move them together otherwise it's easy to lose one or the other so what I'm going to do is going to take this I'm going to slide it up under her name actually I don't want to get too precise at this point here let's take this red box and make the the width of it not overlap onto too much going on here let's let's take this text and let's let's try out some different fonts here. This is the tagline, so let's let's pick a different font that has a little bit of style to it. You can see the font styles down here. And I was looking at this before and I found something called Aspire Demi Bold. So let me go down this list here. And you can pick different things and you can see how it's going to look. And you don't want to maybe you can you want more of a hand style. Um there's some funky styles in here, but I'm looking for one I found before that had some called Aspire Demi Bold. Okay, so now, so you don't want to really change the size of the text until you land on the font that you want, because you can see that font uh, actually came up quite a bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is take one of the corners and drag this out so that it's it's nice and big that we can read it. Not too big that it looks uh, a little bit too overwhelming, but that's readable at that size. Maybe I'll take my red box, make it a little bit taller so it, it it fully encompasses that text. And then this this red box here, well I can have some options. Well, I could ch keep on fiddling with this, but th you know what? There's one element that I haven't put on the on the graphic yet, and that's the portrait of Jenny. So we're going to go back out to add a new photo. And I need to upload a photo and it's going to drop me into my working folder here. And so we're going to work with this portrait of Ginny. I'm going to open that one and it puts it over here in my tray. So I'm going to take it from here and drag it over onto my canvas. And now I can put this photo of Ginny here up onto my canvas. But one of the really cool things about iPicky that it does quite well is it helps us to do a mask. And a mask works well, and especially in the case of a portrait like this where we're doing a composition, because the background of this image isn't really helping in this case. It would be nicer if that background was kind of take a scissor tool and cut it out. Well, in graphics we call that doing, using a mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the portrait and I'm going to come over here to the sidebar and I'm going to choose the option that says Vector Mask. And then I have to open this up, which I just did, and then I'm going to say I'm going to use a vector mask, but I need to click the button that says allow me to edit how the vector mask works. So the mask is basically it's going to be a series, it's going to be an outline here, like what do I want to cut out? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the technique that I like to use to create a mask. So what I'm going to do here is click a series of points and I'm going to be very rough about these points initially. I'm just going to go around, clicking around, rough, not fine-tuning at all, but just a series of rough points that outlines the shape that I want here for my mask. So, so I've gone all the way around and you can see the orange is highlighting the, the part of the image that's going to stay and anything outside of that mask is going to disappear. So watch what happens right now if I just click the apply mask button you'll see that that background in my image here has disappeared. So that's the effect that we wanted to use. And so, But now that rough outline 
we don't want her hair to be squared off like that so we need to go back in and edit this mask and now fine tune it a little bit so I'm going to use down here at the bottom there's a zooming tool here and I can zoom this up a little bit so I can see better now you can see this mask that I've already created all these little circles here are points that I can move around and edit so I can fine tune them a little bit if I missed the points that I wanted to use but in order for this shape to be more usable it has to have more of these circles so I'm going to fine tune it a little bit here but like I said the first round is really just a rough outline just to kind of give yourself a starting point now what I want to do is I want to fine tune it so in between each of these two circles I can anywhere along this line here I can click and drag and that will give me another what we call a vertex and that and that new vertex is going to round out and I can I can move this around a little bit it's going to round out some of these hard edges here and I can do this as many times as I need to and I can I can move my endpoints and I can create anywhere along this middle of this line I can drag out and that will create a new vertex for my outline and if I do enough of those it will take this hard edge and make it softer so if I go around and, and do that I pretty much have now created a soft edge all the way around. Another tool that we can use in masking is what's called a feather. And in this iPicky tool, you can see there is a feather slider, and I can take this and I can slide that, and it will take that hard edge, hard edge and soften it out. And that's a good thing to do. You don't want to soften it out too much in this case because it will look a little funny, but we'll soften it out just a little bit. That will give it a nice soft edge, maybe somewhere between 5 and 10 percent, and that will give us a soft edge for that, for that mask. Now I'm done at this point. I'm going to go ahead and apply it and jump back to my main graphic and see how that works. And you can see there, now it's cropped out that background uh, and it's given me uh, Jenny's profile here, uh, this portrait. Uh, with the with the mask. So now I can move this around a little bit and I can decide again do I want it you know how big or how small do I want it and what I'm looking for here is the overlapping of the different objects gives us um, a depth that makes it interesting here so we've got the the overlap of her head onto the the red um, rectangle and we're, we're crossing over that, we're crossing over into the white space and we're crossing over here. So we can fine tune this a little bit. Maybe I can move her over a little bit this way. What if I want to make her shoes graphic a little bit bigger? Okay, that's fine. But now I'm bumping into the rectangle so I'm going to move the rectangle over. So you can see it's just a fine tuning process and you can compose all these elements you know, how you want them to, to be. So now I'm going to take a little bit of more fine-tuning here let's take her email address and again we could go into into the fonts and we could go pick the font that we like to use we don't want to throw too many fonts um, into a singular graphic because that's really kind of bad form to do that um, let me go ahead and take this one here and I'm going to duplicate that one and I'll move it up I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I, need, I want to change this text to say um, call you could say call or I like to add because this is a mobile number call or text because that that tells people hey this is a mobile number if you just want to even send a text message that's a good thing that you could do also I'm gonna choose the courier new font in this case here because I want this to be sort of a a less obtrusive and that helps it to recede a little bit and we made it nice and small so that we can see call or text and there's the nice number and here's the here's the final reference to uh, email address now remember this is going to be in the blog signature so maybe we want a little bit of style to the name itself we don't want too many things with frills and and hard to read but the name a person's name is a good thing that we could add a little bit of style to so I was looking before and I was going through all these fonts and I found one called yesteryear now your everybody's opinions and is purely subjective here but what styles you like is totally up to you but you have a nice list to choose from here so I picked yesteryear and then I can size it up to the size that I want now I've got myself into a little bit of gem here because her we're running into this box so I've got to drop this down underneath that and drop this down underneath that and maybe I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it's just a bit of fine tuning here so so I have now all the elements that I I really need for my signature. 
I've got the text, I've got the rectangle, we've got the portrait, and we've used the mask, and then we, we inserted this image in the background that we had cropped earlier. Now, in the end, we're going to go ahead and save this image to our disk like we had um, done with the earlier image. We need to save it to our disk. Maybe I'll move this up just a little bit here as I'm looking at it. So I need to save it to the disk. So in order for all this to lock into place, I need to click on the Done button up here. Now, one of the things that I did really kind of is something to watch out for is that once you click done all of these floatable objects get locked in and it's kind of a permanent lock if you go back and want to change your mind uh, you kind of locked yourself in and you almost would have to start over from scratch now this again this is iPicky it's just a free tool um, you kinda have to live with its limitations because well you're not paying for it it's not it's not a full-fledged app like a like a Photoshop that you would let you reopen it and have the full editing capability again so I just want to warn you that once you click done it will lock all those elements together. Now let's but keep in mind too we had talked about this white space at the bottom. If I were to go ahead and click done um, that's going to lock everything in place but then it's going to go back to the editing toolbar that I had before and one of the tools that I had over on the side was was a cropping tool and I would want to use the crop tool and cut off all this white space but I'm going to show you another way that you might attack this problem because once you put this actually into your web page or blog page you might see it in context and say oops I forgot something or oops that's the wrong size or maybe I don't like that font after all. If we leave the iPicky tab open and don't click on done that will lock it all in, then we can come back and make any edits that we want. Maybe we want to make that slightly smaller or, or whatever it is that we want. If we leave the iPicky tab open in editing mode like this, we can come back and make those edits. So what you need to do or need to know how to do is to do a screen capture then. In Windows, you can do a screen capture with the built-in tool called the Snipping Tool. So if I go to the Start screen, and, I, and this is Windows 8, and type in Snipping Tool, I can, or you can see uh, also in Windows 7, the same, the same tool, um, you just hit the Start button and type in SNIP, and it will jump you to where you can click the Snipping Tool. And what I want to do is draw a new snip, if that, whatever they call these things, and I'm going to drag a box here on top of and I'm going to try to get it precise to where I want it to cut it down to. And there it, it captured some portion of my screen that I drew that rectangle around. And then I can go ahead and save this snip, as they say. Again, I can change it to, we talked about this before, JPEG is not... If you really, if you have logos and graphics, and this is a lot of text and different things, you could save this as a PNG format, because it's really not a full-fledged photograph. So I, I probably would prefer to save this as a PNG. You could also save it as a JPEG, either way. But you could save that now, as we would call this, if you, if you put this on your computer somewhere, perhaps on the desktop, we'll call this the signature PNG, and we'll go ahead and save that. Now there is another tool that does screen captures, um, and it works within Windows or Mac, and it's called Skitch. S-K-I-T-C-H. You can download it for Windows or Mac. It does the same kind of thing. Here's a window, and I can click the button that does Screen Snap, and then I can draw a box here, what I want to cut out. So I'm going to cut it down to, to what I'm interested in there. And there it is. It's just a cut down version of my overall screen. And then I can go ahead and I want to save this. So I would save it as an image, and again, I could do PNG, JPEG, or, or whatever works best for you. PNG, again, is good when you're using um, this solid colors like this, what we're doing here with in, in, in graphics. It's not really a photograph that we're saving, so PNG is going to render it a little bit more true. So whether you're using Skitch uh, in Mac, you can also, without even any app, you can do screen captures with the right key combinations. You probably know that if you're on Mac. But in Windows you would need a tool like the Weather Sketch or the Snipping tool in order to do the screen capture. But again, if I leave this iPicky tab open and I can minimize my screen and come back to this, I'm, I'm still in an editing mode that I can make any edits that I want and I wouldn't have to start over from scratch. Now, we've got our graphic created. 
the last step that we need then to work with is getting it into our blog post. Now a lot of you are coming from Active Rain, so let me just go ahead in the context of Active Rain. If I were to go to go to the Active Rain website, I just want to show you where you can edit your signature. If you don't know this already, you can go to your Active Rain website. Once you're logged into Active Rain, you'll see in the upper left hand corner here. This is where you can edit anything related to whether it's your blog settings or your profile. So what we want to do, this is not our, we're not editing our profile page, that's a different edit. We're editing our blog settings. So if I go to my blog settings, you'll see one of the things here is labeled the signature and here's a box that you can go ahead and work on your signature. And you can, you can click the point now, remember with this type of thing, the new format of Active Rain says uh, the blog post by. So we want the, that if this is what we're using this for, is the banner to be at the very top of this. So I've already got my blog signature in here. It looks a little bit different, but basically you'd want to put your insertion point at the very top here, and then you would want to insert a picture. So we'll use this, and we would go and go find the picture that we just created. So I had temporarily saved it onto my desktop. So I'm going to choose the button here that says we're going to the file manager tool and at the top of the file manager tool there's an option that says upload a file and it says I can drop the files or click and if I click it's going to take me to a pop-up window and if I jump up to my desktop here I'm going to choose the signature PNG that I had created and that will upload. See it's uploading it onto the system. So now it's uploaded onto the system. I'm going to return back to the file list and I'm going to choose that and that will go ahead and choose that file that I've uploaded. You can put a description here and then we'll go ahead and insert that into our blog signature. Now you can see that that would be right at the very top of my blog signature and I'll go I would go ahead and click the update button now I'm not going to put Jenny's information in my signature so I won't update my own blog post like that but that's how you would do it again you just go into again through quick recap up at the top here go into your blog settings it takes you to this page you go to your signature box use the insert image button you upload the image and then you insert the image just like what we just did there and that would put that now into your blog post and then this again this is what it's going to look like in context here where you can see a person finds you finds your blog post they read your article they really like what they read they want to know who you are so now this says posted by and it's got this nice image about who you are what's your name tagline photo um, your photo if you want any sort of image here to make this lively and it's good to give them some some points to, to reach out to you to phone number email would be a good starting point and then you could go ahead and follow off with some textual information your social buttons and so forth like Jenny has here so that would be a great signature well there you have the session for today we're wrapping it up now we were able to create a graphic that we're able to use on our web page whether it's our business page blog page or otherwise we saw how the great little tool web tool called ipicky.com was a free way for us to take all these different objects and assemble them onto a canvas move them around adding text graphics, even doing such things as masking an image, which is a very cool thing that you can do with a, with a free editor. And so we were able to do that, and then by doing that, by doing these types of things, our places that people come to find us on the web will be much more interesting experience for those that are there. Well, again, my name is Craig Daniels. You can find me on the web at techzmx.com, and you'll find my blog there. And you'll also find there on that page uh, sponsorship buttons. I appreciate this is all these things that I do on the web are without paywall, but I do appreciate those that appreciate and are able to, to throw something there into the tip jar in appreciation. I appreciate the sponsors of the things that I do in teaching. Again, this is Craig Daniels. I'm glad that you joined me today. Episode number two, creating graphics for web pages. And stay tuned for more future videos in the Tech Tutor series. Catch you then.